Hey, what's up? It's Fuel Your Life Friday. Let's go. Have you ever really thought about how often we grieve endings on the regular throughout life? The end of a relationship, the end of a job, the end of a friendship, the end to a normal way of living, the end of an era like having a full house, or the end of being a stay-at-home parent, the end of a life. Now, there's tons of endings while we're living this human experience, and endings are hard. I've found myself in the middle of an ending, actually, (laughs) The entirety of 2021 has felt like one big loop of endings for me. And if you've been listening to the show for a while or follow me on social media, you get peeks into my personal life through conversations and personal episodes or you know, sharing photos and storytelling. So depending on where you are, you may or may not know that this year I had an unexpected 800 mile move that really rocked my world. But what you may not know is that this year I lost a bunch of my long-standing clients because their businesses weren't able to stay afloat due to pandemic issues. My trust was betrayed deeply by people I care about. And then there's just been messiness in my home life and personal relationships. It really has felt like every time I start to pick up the pieces of one really disrupting thing, another thing has happened to knock me back down. I began feeling myself run out of bandwidth, emotionally, mentally, physically, and creatively. And knowing this in early October, I began looking at my podcast calendar and I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to take a break after the 300th episode. So I began planning for this. I knew consciously that this is what I needed to do. Something inside of me just kept telling me that not only did I need this, Um, that I also needed to be okay with not holding the space for conversations because I needed to hold the space for myself to heal and to also gain clarity. I also deeply felt that I was going to need that space for something else. Though, (laughs) like most things that are intuition-led, I didn't really have a good reason as to why I felt like that. But the first weekend of November had a series of events happen that just rocked my personal world. And the week after that, my beloved grandfather, who was our first storyteller for our Awaken Your Soul Sunday series, was admitted to the hospital with COVID pneumonia. And one week later, the day before Thanksgiving, he passed away. I don't know who noticed and who didn't, but that Friday after Thanksgiving, a Fuel Your Life Friday episode never even aired. I don't really even know why, as it was a scheduled episode. But I was so checked out emotionally and mentally that I didn't even really care to look into it until that Sunday. So the week after he passed then was full of minor life challenges, including a vehicle breaking down and a call from one of my kids' principals, real fun, and just like a series of never-ending pushbacks through the smallest of things in life that just really added up to big annoyances, right? And in the midst of it all, I just felt myself getting more and more tired more and more low vibrational, more burnt out. I realize that I really haven't given myself time to grieve any ending in life recently. I also haven't properly dealt with my emotions by sitting with them. I also realize that because of everything going on, I was forgetting to share episodes on social media, or I began dreading to edit episodes and I was putting off making graphics. I then began to feel like I was doing a disservice to my guests, to you, the audience, and also myself. But even though I've consciously become aware of how much I needed this break, I still struggled with letting everyone down, letting guests down for not hosting any more conversations, um, letting the audience down for breaking the consistency and not showing up to deliver conversations and episodes that help you through various parts of life. Letting other colleagues I work with down, like the podcast agencies, for saying no to their pitches and clients, even if they were aligned. And also letting myself down for not managing better, for getting to this point of burnout, for building the momentum for three years and 300 episodes straight, just to say, I'm tired. But I am tired. And while I may be letting people down, I know I need to detach from the stories I tell myself about how bad it will be for everyone else and be real with myself that if I don't take a break now, 
well, then I'm not honoring myself or practicing what I preach. So I thought more about detachment. How do I detach healthily from my routine, from the podcast, from my own expectations, from people in my life who have hurt me? How do I detach from living in a pain cycle? I saw a tweet last week that said, the biggest thing I've learned and have to come to accept is detaching, as hard as it can be, is ultimately for your greatest and highest good. It's never personal. Now that tweet made me think about today's episode because we've all likely have been faced with this a time or two. I mean, I think the easiest way it's probably popped up is um, if you've had a, a breakup, right? You have to detach from that person. But detachment, it comes in various forms. Some may be, well, more unhealthy, like emotional numbness, where we are detaching as a way of avoidance from trauma, anxiety, or stress, which is what I have definitely been doing. But in other ways, detachment comes from setting or building boundaries, boundaries that improve your overall life, especially your mental health. And this is what I intend to do. So my friends, to grant the space that I need to be my best self, I need to take a break from the mic, step back, and go within. And when I reemerge, I know I'll be able to serve better, aid in healing, educate with intention, and create through inspiration and converse with more openness. Basically, I know I'll be back once again to hold the space. I'm unsure how long this hiatus of mine will last, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months. But what I do know is that I am so grateful for you, you beautiful human, for joining me on this journey. Whether you have been an A1 from day one type of listener or you've just joined me, I appreciate you. And hey, like I said, we have three hundred published episodes. So I encourage you to go back and listen to the ones that you've missed or even maybe the ones that you've loved and you know are worth a second listen because sometimes I go back and do that and I pick up on something new that maybe I didn't hear the first time. Either way, I hope your holiday season is full of love and light and I'll see you back here sometime in 2022. But until then, remember, every level of life is an opportunity to grow. Be well, my friend.